Hey, my name is Dr. Brendan McCarthy. Welcome to my podcast. I am the Chief Medical Officer of Protea Medical Center in Chandler, Arizona. Um, today, we are doing a couple brief Q&As. This is an opportunity when we go through the uh, comment sections in our videos on YouTube and Instagram, mostly Instagram, and we come up with the best questions or questions that I feel would be really beneficial to have a bigger platform to answer it on because these questions are things that a lot of women want to know and need to know. And there's such a shortage of good information out there. Um, I'm doing my best to make sure I help with that. And, and these questions you do really help. Another thing I want to say, and I said in a previous episode, I really want to drill down on this and let you know this. I love your crosstalk in the comment section. When someone will write their life experience of what's going on with them and the corner they feel they're painted in or just just the, the, the difficulty they're having. And another woman from somewhere else around the world responds to her with compassion and understands her and shares with her what her story is and, and women further reach out to one another and communicate with each other. That is something that is beyond what I could have ever imagined to be a part of. And I want to say thank you for that. All of you, thank you. It really is humbling to be a part of something like that. So this is an opportunity I'm going to have to, to help accelerate some of these and put them to the top. And, and these questions that I think would be helpful for more women to see, other than kind of searching through the comment section and then looking for other people's questions and, and trying to find what the answers were. So... Um, I'll go right into it. This one woman uh, wrote a comment and it said, uh, I use progesterone in a dissolving pill under the tongue, which is good. And uh, my estradiol is a tablet. My testosterone is a capsule. Are there better routes to take these? Uh, I was using testosterone cream, but it's kind of messy and I would forget to take it. So let me start by saying progesterone is an oral dissolving tablet is epic. That's it. That's what it needs to be. Progesterone when you swallow it, your absorption intestinally is very low. And it's even lower when you put progesterone topically. It's just progesterone is a tough one to get right. The one that dissolves under the tongue has the best results. And you don't have to just trust me. Do the lab work. Take the progesterone, run the lab. See what your numbers go up to. It works. So I like progesterone sublingually. Hands down, it's been what we prescribe in practice. And it works every time, all the time. I stand by. With that said, going from a sublingual progesterone to an, a tablet of estrogen, it's like, um, what were they, what are they doing? You know, oral estrogen preferentially converts to estrone in your liver. When part of the digestive process is breaking it down, you'll make so much estrone from that estradiol. So your estradiol that you're taking orally it doesn't mean your estradiol levels in your bloodstream are going to go up. It means your estrone levels go up. Your estradiol will go up a little bit, but estrone really goes up. There are three different estrogens in your body as a woman. Estradiol, estrone, estriol. Estradiol is the one we want. That's the one you want. Estrone is a downstream metabolite that's a little inflammatory. Actually, no, it's not a little. It's an inflammatory estrogen. It's associated with breast cancer and deep vein thrombosis. It stimulates thrombin. It stimulates your body to want to create clots and throw clots. That's why oral contraceptives are a problem is because it increases estrone levels. And the third one is estriol. Estriol is an estrogen that's very weak and it's um, common during pregnancy. It's commonly used as a topical with women with vaginal dryness. Um, I'm not a fan of that because when you put it vaginally, transvaginally, if you're going to be uh, uh, sexually active, your partner will be exposed to that. And putting estriol on uh, your partner is unethical, in my opinion, because they never signed on for it. And it causes health consequences to men. And I'm not a fan of that without them knowing. And if you do transvaginal estriol on Monday, you can't guarantee it's not there Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. If, in fact, it actually is still there. You know, to a lesser degree, of course, it's moving downward. But I mean... We should let him know. We should let your partner know. And then on top of that, do they want that? And what are the health impacts on their body having estriol, you know, uh, transmitted to them? 
So I want you to know, estriol, while it's a safe one, it's not safe for your partner. Topical is not good. So back to the oral estrogen, estradiol. When you take in oral estradiol, it preferentially converts to estrone, as I mentioned. When your doctor runs lab work, which they should run lab work every six months, at least, at least once a year, and that's bare minimum, that's like, man, you should do your job a little better than that. They should be doing it every six months, okay? So when they run your labs and they run your estrogen, they can run it a lot of different ways. They could say, let me just do a total estrogen, and that's going to be the sum of, of the three estrogens in your body. That is not a helpful test. That is a that is a waste. Do not do that test. Just don't. Then they could do fractionated estrogens, which is much better, which is what you need. And that should be looking at estradiol, estrone, and estriol. Those are the three. You want to run that lab always. Maybe not estriol. You don't really need estriol unless you're doing estriol topically, which you know how I feel about that. If your doctor is just wanting to avoid anything and just look... just just look at what they want to look at. They're just going to run estradiol. And they're only going to give you estradiol orally as a pill to move that estradiol to a place where you're going to be symptom-free and having benefit, which would be 82 on a lab because 82 is the magic number for bone density. So if I'm going to give someone estradiol, I'm going to make sure I'm getting their estradiol close to 82. That's my goal. If your doctors are only running estradiol, they're going to miss what's happening to that estrone. And then that estrone, as it gets elevated, your risk factors for a clot and for breast pathology just keeps jumping up without being aware of it. So doing oral estradiol, some of you have no choice. I get it. Just because you don't have a choice doesn't mean you're not, you don't deserve to be educated to what's happening in real time with your labs. You deserve that lab. You deserve that care. You deserve that person to do their best always with you. So if you're stuck with just oral, you still deserve your doctor to do everything in their power to understand the downstream metabolites and what they're doing and make sure you're educated so your decision is always an educated decision. Testosterone as a capsule is better than testosterone topical because the conversion of testosterone to dihydrotestosterone on the skin is pretty high. It's pretty high. But also, your topical testosterone is going to get on people around you. So if you're doing topical testosterone, you put it on your thigh, your arm, wherever you're putting it, you're still going to transfer it to the people around you. The, the studies are clear on that. The literature is good. But you don't have to believe me. You could do topical testosterone and run a lab on your kid and see what their testosterone went to. If their dihydrotestosterone is elevated, you know, come on. This is what that is. And what about your pet? Very common. But you say, Brendan, I just put it on the inside of my thigh, put it inside my arm. Yeah, but what about your clothing? It wicks into your clothing, doesn't it? And we can't guarantee how it spreads. But there are enough studies now over time that shows it just does spread. So be aware of that. So topical bad. What about oral testosterone, Brendan? Is that, can that be bad? Yes. And the reason why is it also has a high conversion to dihydrotestosterone. Dihydrotestosterone is the one that causes all the side effects we want to avoid. We need to keep your dihydrotestosterone low. So some of you are stuck. You're like, I can only do oral testosterone, Brendan. That's all I can do. Okay, all right, I get that. But same as estradiol. You need to run your metabolites and make sure you're safe. So oral testosterone, we need to keep an eye on that conversion to dihydrotestosterone. The other thing about testosterone that's important is that testosterone when done orally is hepatotoxic. It's dangerous to the liver. So you want to make sure you're running liver enzymes on the regular with those people. You want to make sure their liver enzymes are not becoming elevated. You want to know if the liver is under duress. And then finally, oral testosterone lowers HDL cholesterol. Oral testosterone has a negative impact on cardiovascular health. IM, injectable testosterone, does not harm the heart because it does not affect HDL cholesterol. HDL cholesterol is manufactured in the liver and you're taking oral testosterone that has first passed through the liver. The pathology is in the liver from the testosterone being converted and broken down in the liver. Testosterone itself injected does not cause any issues with cholesterol. It's when it's done orally and you have that first pass and the liver is getting a little beat up from the oral testosterone that you have that issue. The better route... For testosterone in my experience is injectable or a pellet 
And the better route for estradiol is going to be injectable or a pellet or a patch. A patch is good too because it keeps it contained. It doesn't let it spread to other people. A patch of testosterone, not so good. Conversion rate to dihydrotestosterone, way too high. It's not a good thing to do. Don't do patch testosterone. If you're stuck and you have to do oral of both of those, you deserve the lab work that I mentioned. I hope that helps. This matters to me. I truly do care about your comments because it helps me focus this podcast to be of use to you because that's my goal. I didn't do this podcast to stand up here and you know, be like, blah, 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 and talk and, you know, that's not my cause here. That's not my goal. I'm not trying to, you know, be shiny and, 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 and say things to, to sound good and be good. No, no, I'm not saying things to sound good. I want to be good. I love this work so much because I love the positive impact that it has on your life. I like to be of service and of help. So when you write comments, it matters to me. I do care about them. And, and as I mentioned, I will, we will, Justin, myself, the, the producer and I, will do our best to find the ones that are the most relevant, the most helpful, and do episodes like this. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please like, share, and subscribe. I'll see you soon.